So uh, for those who are staying uh, for the research infrastructure and, um, and uh, for the discussions, uh, we can proceed as follows. Um, one, I think, uh, important uh, action that we can take since uh, I think Raul and Gergely are still here, right? Yes, I'm here. That's very good, is to uh, better explore uh, the possible scenarios of collaboration and see how uh, we can do that since we are presenting the open air access services in uh, <clears throat> by integrating uh, the services that we're offering with uh, the research infrastructures and the infrastructure offer. Okay, so that could be one possibility to go. <clears throat> so if I start from the themes that we have highlighted, we have um, some use cases here already suggested, which we can discuss. And uh, for that, of course, we'd need uh, your support and the support of the people around <laughs> to better understand uh, the scenario. Uh, so one thing, and I just roll it out so um, to, to, for, the, for the sake of uh, sharing common terminology, we are doing is to uh, take action to embed what we call publishing workflows within the e-infra and RI service uh, experience. The, the idea, the concept is, is simple. It's not, the, the concept is we cannot rely on science, scientists to uh, manually publish all their results anymore. So this is not possible. The results span well beyond publications. We all know that in several cases are produced by machine and in quantities and in, uh, in uh, relationships that are too hard to uh, uh, cope with uh, at the manual level. So we need machinery to, to do that, to keep track of the science we perform, of the elements that we produce, the elements that we use, uh, the uh, services that we adopt to transform an input into an output, to the configuration. So all the aspects that are necessary to uh, track science, reward scientists, reproduce, and keep track of impact. So these are the things that machinery are supposed to do. And for that, we need to establish common interoperability framework, common understandings, and push uh, at the right abstract, uh, the right abstraction level, all these concepts because we know that in some cases there is a strong community flavor and in other cases is that we can uh, uh, work across, okay? So the ideas, the simple, the first very simple ideas that I came up with uh, at least listening at uh, your presentation uh, are the ones that you see here where your projects are mentioned. Uh, two actions, which are the one related with EGI and DICE are more at the infrastructure level. This means that, and, and again, this is very conceptual. If we make sure that any action taken at the infrastructure level is properly published, this means that all research infrastructures, all community using these uh, infrastructure services are provided with out of the box tooling to publish, okay? So let's say the, the lower in the fabric we, uh, embed our publishing principles, the more others will benefit out of it, out of the box. And they will need less efforts at their uh, thematic level to build publishing workflows. Uh, in some cases, this is, as I mentioned before, this is not possible because we want to, uh, for example, capture the essence of uh, specific communities. And so if you look at C-scale and reliance, uh, which is very interesting, they do the other way around. So it's general purposeness at the, at the community level. Uh, I, I really like that. In this case, instead, we can embed the workflows directly into the thinking of the scientists. So in the way they uh, will be provided thematic services. Uh, an example is reliance, right? So a scientist will create uh, explicitly or indirectly uh, research objects, right? And we want these research objects to be automatically published, automatically uh, uh, provided with the right metadata, uh, enriched when future versions will become, will come or will be linked by other objects, or they will be added with a 
further objects in, uh, of the aggregation they represent and therefore need to be updated and so on, right? And this has to be made available. Uh, and made available not only to the, the guys using the service, but also to others who are not even aware of the services. They will find it in Scholar, in Scopus, in Open Air, in whatever, okay? So the whole infrastructure needs to be nicely shaped, bottom up and top down. So uh, what's your thinking on this general conceptualization? Do you think it would be worth investing in this direction? I, I am interested <laughs> from my side. Uh, shall we, um, I'm not sure what was the path to follow. If you, if you have other ideas which may, let's say, uh, respond to what I said, which are more concrete, uh, I'd be happy uh, to pick up on those and start the discussion. Otherwise, uh, I can, of course, propose specific actions, but uh, you know that Gergely had something in mind as well, for example. What do you think? Uh, what's the, for example, the position with respect to the experiments you're going to perform in EGIAs? Uh, when I use a notebook, Fantastic thing, by the way. So it, this is something we need to discuss that goes uh, in other bullets here, uh, possible corporations. But if I am a user and I'm using your notebook, uh, what are you thinking to offer me uh, in order for me to publish the results of what I'm doing? To do it in the proper place, uh, to do it in a fair way, to do it in a reproducible way, because that's the nice part of it because you are offering a notebook. So the notebook can keep track of all the actions of all the parameters of everything that is needed uh, to make my outcome not only published, but also when accessed, uh, reproducible. If it were referred to and you publish together with it, the representation of the experiment. So this could be one way to go. One thing that I, for example, one could think of is to align uh, uh, and the way experiments are published. And since Reliance is proposing a methodology together with a standard, we could propose that and build specific workflows that go into the direction. Um, for example, the adoption of uh, arrow crates as a way to express and to represent experiments in general, which is cross-platform in a way, and uh, protocols that allow any service to publish arrow crates into Zenodo, into B2Share, uh, or into other repositories, as long as these repositories are com com compliant to these uh, APIs and, and standards. So these are the kind of approaches that I had in mind. Yeah. I mean, from from my perspective, um, uh, what I was thinking um, was um, going into this direction. I mean, of course, I needed to to get your your also view on that um, because um, yeah, we. I mean, the, the research topic, like like you know, right? It's it's, a, it's just like the logical unit that um, can have connections to different resources. This can be like the the notebooks that uh, can be used uh, via the EGI um, uh, computing resource uh, infrastructure, um, but also this kind of uh, resources from the DICE, right? And that can be data sets or can be any other research artifacts that were generated or that are available uh, and connected, of course, as part of one uh, research world, one uh, of whatever kind of scientific investigation is going on. And uh, the, the idea then is how this can also be moving to the part of the publication process into, into the open air environment in general. So of course, I we were thinking of making some kind of, you know, pushing this every time there is some kind of uh, milestone that we call it snapshots, right? So every milestone we can just push this into the publication platform. Um, and, uh, and and this would allow us, of course, to, to increase the visibility of these results uh, to the wider uh, community. Uh, and of course, um, to, to also, you know, identify some other connections with existing uh, other resources that are available there. 
So I, I mean, it's a good step in this direction, but of course we need to identify what will be like the best way of pushing. This is part of, I'm saying pushing or, you know, depositing into the, um, in this platform, what would be the best format? What would be the best um, way of putting these uh, results into, or the research object into the platforms and that kind of thing. That's my, you know, the, the kind of uh, discussion that I think that we should have. Okay, so um, yes, I think this is a, a way to go and probably we can discuss it further when we are going to meet uh, in person. So really start a, a concrete uh, discussion on what to, what to do. The same will, will uh, happen with the, the other uh, projects with which we have planned individual meetings. So uh, we're meeting with all of you trying to come up with all possible collaboration actions. Uh, and I'm trying to keep track of things. Um, so if we look at this picture, uh, there are several things that we can do uh, for the communities. And I wonder if you as Reliance and Syscale uh, would be interested. We are working already with EPOS uh, in that direction. So with the, with the research infrastructure, um, but there are other things that we uh, can do, for example, uh, monitoring and discovery. So for monitoring, we can provide monitoring for the research infrastructures you are serving and building. So to track uh, the, the number of outcomes uh, that are due to the services that you provide. So this will measure basically the overall impact um, of your infrastructure, as well as all the results that scientists are publishing because uh, of your collaboration actions or whatever you have. So that would be one possibility. The other one is to flank uh, your community in a broader way with respect to the, the, the research infrastructure and not necessarily one, of, but could be more than one infrastructure with discovery services, specific services for that. As you've heard in the presentation, we can customize that. And uh, we can customize it and try to uh, find the largest number of uh, objects, research objects, which in the future will contain research objects as well, uh, that are relevant for your community. So these are two things. The third one is, of course, apart from the integration with Zenodo, which could be uh, beneficial, of course, for, as we discussed, it's also uh, Argos. So Argos offer user interfaces to manage and build your data management plans. So maybe you could consider to use Argos as part of your uh, internal management as projects really to um, build your resource data management plans. So in this case, the DMP would be fully uh, integrated with uh, the scholarly communication. So published as a publication, uh, linked with persistent identifiers uh, to the whole, to all the entities that we know about uh, in scholarly communications ranging from authors, so researchers IDs uh, to DOI, so the data that you're going to produce or the persistent identifiers of the repositories you are referring to and, and so on. So that could be another way of action. So out of the three, we can offer really monitoring for research impact, discovery also, and uh, the DMP. Yeah, and also from my side, I would say that, um, you know, it's interesting few things. Um, one is the, um, all of these graphs, uh, you know, these um, um, research data graphs that, that you have in Opener, this could be a, a also a very good source for us in the enrichment phases that we have for the uh, research object that is happening now automatically. And that we were of course, um, always trying to connect to some, uh, well, we had in the, you know, previously we had uh, like a service that was uh, getting or trying to get some information from uh, scholarly communication, like uh, it was Google Scholar, but it was not, um, we didn't go further with that. So I think in this direction, we can actually uh, you know, reuse those kind of services that you have there, uh, trying to leverage and, and, and 
increase um, or yeah, improve the kind of enrichment that we can do. Um, that's one thing. And the other thing is regarding the Argos and DMPs. Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. Uh, we have, for example, planned some kind of fair assessments, wizards or you know, tools that can also check or take into account that there is such kind of data management plan um, or that you know, verify uh, that the data management plan is actually uh, you know, being applied, uh, you know, that kind of things we need to check exactly what can I, what we, we can do um, uh, in a machine <laughs> understandable way, but uh, uh, is something that for sure can be a piece that we can connect to the assessments that we want to do as well. Yes, that's something that we can uh, certainly support you with, uh, with all the information Ellie uh, gave a nice presentation, but uh, I mean, the time was really short, so we can uh, go more into the detail of that. That's, that's true for all research uh, uh, projects uh, in general, so we can support that for all projects uh, out there. Uh, as to the, um, to the RO, research object support, that's exactly what I had in mind when I heard you. So um, knowing what Carol uh, is presenting, one of the issues is the fact that creating the research objects required interaction with several sources where objects are originally stored. And uh, the graph would certainly function as one single entry point to all these sources. So given that a community uh, has a nicely uh, sustainable and uh, uh, integrated sources with the scholarly communication, for example, I don't know, uh, Workflow Hub will be, or uh, uh, Pangea, and again, all the services out there are part of OpenAir. So if your scientists are putting their objects in there, then you can build services for the creation of research objects that interact with our APIs because we have all the objects there. Yeah. So that will simplify a lot <laughs> and your uh, software development in general. And that's really one way to go that I'd like to propose to Carol as well. Is yeah, that I, I think this is a very nice thing. I mean, we should uh, follow up on this. Uh, in particular, it's an important point. Okay, Deborah. Are you still there? Yes, I'm here. What do you think about these possible uh, solutions? You, because I remember um, I collaborate with Mark and, yep. and we had the discussions in the past uh, and we were close to put them in the proposal. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you have explicit plans in that direction or thinking of standards for publishing data or integrating with other services, etc. cetera? Uh, okay, so we don't have anything explicit in the, in the proposal, but um, I think it is um, something that uh, it would be nice to explore if we can uh, add this uh, on top of what we have already planned. Um, yeah, I know there has been already some discussion on this, uh, not, not involving myself, but more the technical team. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I, I would be supportive to explore a little bit more this scenario and see what we can achieve. Uh, as you know, all our projects have a lot of money uh, to be spent to the provision of services and very little for <laughs> development of services, but or further integration. But um, I think it is something that um, we have to explore, at least see um, what is required and how we can make is this possible with what uh, with the effort we have, with the resources we have. So the, the, but as part of the service provision, are you working on a specific interoperability framework uh, towards uh, the, the, let's say, the, the exposition of your services uh, through standards and via the USC? So is there any specific action or let's say you're packaging and integrating the services in a closed environment for the moment and uh, exposing them only via, via UIs. Uh, yeah, uh, okay, so sorry, I, I, now I got your point. Uh, so um, no, at the moment we are working as, uh, um, so we, are, we are looking at the interoperability guidelines and what is uh, available, but we haven't 
yet uh, workers at in general. So um, it's, uh, it's something that it is in our plan to, to explore and work on. Um, so yeah, it's something that we can we can look at uh, in, in the as a possible collaboration between our projects. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, is anybody in the audience uh, working for a research infrastructure and willing to know more about Nexus and, of course, also the other O7? Paolo, can yes. I? Yes, Alessia. Uh, Alessia speaking. Yes, I have a, a question. Um, so we discussed um, about these interoperability frameworks and uh, also the fact that uh, generic infrastructure like open air, but I see also EGI is, uh, is not a domain dependent infrastructure. So it's uh, horizontal, let's say. So, um, how can we, uh, let's say, merge an interoperability framework which is generic with the specificities of the communities that we are going to serve? So, should it be better to collaborate on specific use case uh, and then adapt them to a generic? Um, audience or vice versa. Think about a general, a generic interoperability framework and then try it on specific use cases. Mm, it's a good question. I think, I think that's my personal opinion, of course, but I think these are two different problems, basically. So uh, we are not looking for one interoperability framework. There can be many. And uh, each interoperability framework has a different aim. Okay, so if I think of EGI and DICE, uh, where their way of thinking is uh, very high level, so is providing virtual machines or providing storage space, or when you think of that, you are completely agnostic of the kind of content or the kind of uh, software you're going to run, right? You're not imposing anything, and these interoperability framework, we'll have to count on that. Um, so when we want to publish at that level, we know that we're publishing an object whose uh, description has to be injected from the top. So your interoperability framework is an interoperability framework that is generic with respect to the application domain. And the application domain has to inject the necessary data. So this means that thematic services using the uh, underground services, when using them, we we'll have to introduce the necessary context for publishing to take place. Okay, so that's roughly the thinking, I guess. Instead, if you go at the higher level and you want to publish, then in this case, you have everything it takes, of course, and you do it specifically at that level. So, Yes, uh, uh, it's context injection in a way. And the lower you go, yes. the more you need. So that's, I think, should be the approach, but it is one of the many solutions. Um, so one other thing that I wanted to mention is the, this idea that I mentioned by mail to all of you to organize the workshop with the commission. So we take maybe a month or two to draft a plan of what we want to do with, across the 07 bilaterally or all together. And then we uh, organize a workshop where we present to the commission all these ideas uh, in a nicely organized and structured way um, and present the plans. Uh, I think it would be great, maybe not today, but to set up a date for that workshop that we all agree where we invite the commission so that we are kind of forced to converge <laughs> soon <laughs> enough to deliver something. I, I also think that um, it would be nice so that we can get feedback from the commission on our ideas instead of waiting, let's say our general first review meeting where we present what we have done and maybe they will say that this was not what they expected from us. So I think that providing them already our our vision on how the collaboration, the integration and collaboration among us should work 
uh, and get early feedback would allow us to to already shape uh, both our, what we do. I mean, to make them either to say them that what they ask is not feasible or doesn't make sense, uh, or to uh, adapt a little bit to to towards their their opinion on what we should do. So I think it's uh, it's a nice idea. And also, as you said, give us a, a deadline where we absolutely have to deliver something <laughs> because otherwise I know we are all very busy and this kind of activity tend to slip a bit. Mankind, so we're not, we don't have a lot of funds to do it at least. Uh, so we should better uh, plan them in advance. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, Maybe also to have some apart from these bilateral meetings that kindly you 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 started to to organize. Maybe we can also already think to have uh, a more um, a meeting among all or seven, maybe involving more specific people, or also maybe on the technical side or expert on specific services that uh, we can discuss a bit more in detail. Uh, possible possible technical uh, integration and interoperability solution. Yes, because um, I I, lo I love to join this discussion, but I'm not a technical person, so I'm kind of. I, I would hope, uh, Deborah, that in the next uh, meetings, the face-to-face the -face meetings we're going to have now with uh, Nexus and the rest, will take place, of course, also. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But we'll involve uh, technical people. Yeah. So, and, and when we're going to meet, we're going to discuss actual plans and concrete ideas and have priorities and decide what to, what to go for first and, and so on, because uh, I don't think we'll be able to arrange for them for the meetings. I mean, it's five projects, right? So yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So we need to, to <laughs> ask, right? Um, okay, that's fine. So I, it's nice to see we all agree. Um, and uh, one question for you, Deborah. So as DICE, uh, are you co considering to use uh, Argos or to explore possibilities of going for monitor and uh, uh, discovery services? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I haven't, we haven't got yet into the point to, to really uh, look in details to that, but uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, sure. It's, it's nice to to start looking in what you already have uh, and, and see. Yeah, that would be good. Well, Argos is also the, the result of a, of a collaboration uh, yeah. in the past, so I think it's worth using it. But um, we you would get also full support, of course, because uh, we, we are here to serve. So we yeah. have support from Argos uh, and we will help you. Okay. Good. Um, so I think uh, for the time we had, we had a lot of ideas on the table. We put a lot of ideas on the table for Little Grill. So thank you. Again, uh, is there any other question uh, from the audience or? I'm just also uh, supporting all of these ideas of the, you know, bilaterals and zero uh, seven meetings and workshop with the commission. So um, we are all for that. Great. So well, thank you all again. That was extremely interesting and important. So we got to know each other better. Unfortunately, not in person yet, but we are hopeful, right? That's the injection that we'd like to have more than the context injection. And so <laughs> I wish you all the best injections you can have. <laughs> and um, uh, talk soon again. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks to you.